Hey everybody, what's up? This is Dave, and I'm going to be showing you how to line up the metronome to a track that previously wasn't recorded with a metronome. So in this example, I have recorded a little piano ditty that is not locked up to the metronome at all. And when I hit play, you'll see not only is it not lined up to the metronome, but it is constantly changing tempo. Here it is. Okay, so as you can see, this would be a lot of problems if you were trying to record drums to it or anything. So um, what we need to do is create a tempo map, which is going to have some time changes um, so that you will hear the metronome clicking with the downbeats and individual beats of the measures. And the way that you're going to want to approach this is, first of all, you're going to want to turn all your tracks to being sample based. And doing this makes it so that as we make tempo changes, um, the track isn't going to be shifting its notes around. So basically the way I did that is I just held down option, which means anything I do for this track is going to do this for all the tracks in the project. And then I just clicked on this little icon and clicked on sample based. So once I have that down, what I'm going to want to do is find a, a tempo that's pretty close to what I am playing. So what I'm going to want to do is if you press Command-1, it'll pull up your transport. And just make sure that your conductor is on. And um, I'm going to hit play, and then I'm going to double-click up here on the current tempo. And I'm going to tap T to kind of determine what the current tempo is. Here I go. Okay, so we're seeing it somewhere around 138. So um, the reason why I do that is just so that I have a good count into the first measure. So what we're going to want to do now at this point is get the downbeat of the first measure on this track to line up with the downbeat of one of my measures here. So in this case, I'm just going to have it line up with the downbeat of measure 3. So I'm going to switch to slip mode. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit, and I'm just going to shift the track over so that the downbeat, and this little ditty has a pickup note, so um, I don't want this first note to line up. I want the second note here to line up on the downbeat. So, um, so checking that out, that's sounding like it's pretty close. Of course, it's not 100% accurate, but... Um, we're going to now lock it all in using identify beat. So what we are going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to show Pro Tools what points of this audio file matches certain measures. So in other words, we're going to identify this as measure 3 beat 1. We're going to identify this downbeat here with this measure as the beat one of measure four and so forth as we go so we want to start off by first identifying this first one so to do that i'm going to go back to my grid mode i'm going to click here so that i am right on the downbeat of um, measure three i'm going to press command i and you can see it's saying that this is measure three beat one we're going to say okay and the rule, the tempo map up here, you can see changes blue, which means that we are in an identify um, beat mode. And so I can go ahead and I can click on any of these if I needed to and adjust and and even identify measure three beat one somewhere else if I needed to. But I've got a different kind of flexibility than when it's all green up here and I'm changing the tempo. And I'll give you another example of the other mode here in just a minute. But um, I'm going to go ahead and hit play and find the downbeat for the next measure. Okay, so it's right here. So 
um, I'm going to hold down command and click right before this cord and the reason why I'm holding down command is that's a way to temporarily suspend grid mode if you would like and if you don't want to keep switching between slip and grid then just stay in grid mode and hold down command and um, that'll allow you to click outside of whatever your grid settings are so the other thing I'm doing is I am making sure my tab to transient is on so that when I hit tab you can see it moves to the next note to the beginning of the next note and that of course becomes really helpful instead of trying to always click right on the, the note so I'm gonna press command I again and up pops the window and whatever um, number I end up typing you're gonna see it zeros out all the numbers to the right so right here you can see that if I press 4 you can see it zeroed out the beat to be beat 1 and then any subdivisions were automatically zeroed out and that's important to know because you don't want to get to a point where you're typing in all three of those numbers so I'm gonna say okay here I'm gonna find the beat 3 so here's beat 3 so I'm gonna again command click right before the note I'm gonna press tab command I and this time I'm going to press the right arrow key and I'm going to press 3 and as you can see that zeroed out all the numbers to the right press enter that's now right in so now we're going to go to the downbeat of this next measure press tab command I and this should be the downbeat of measure 5 so I'm gonna press 5 and zeros out the two numbers to the right press OK so I think you're probably getting the idea here I'm gonna do a few more here and as you get going on this you'll find out that you'll start getting a lot faster but the first few will take you probably a little bit to get used to but um, here we go I'm gonna go ahead and play what I've got here so way better and of course me this um, chord right here wasn't right in with the click on beat 3 so I'm just going to go ahead and identify that one as well to make it a little bit more accurate but you see the by identifying the beats you can see how these tempo changes are being created since the material originally wasn't played a hundred percent accurate so um, the trick now though is once you get to this point where you've identified the beats for a certain area is that then you can straighten out the section so that it is a hundred percent accurate and the way that you can do that is going back over to any of your music tracks and switching that back to tick based and by doing that um, now as we make any tempo changes it's going to shift the notes around to follow those tempo changes so by holding down command and clicking on the plus arrow up here on this tempo ruler I can switch to my tempo events which is back to the green ruler and so you can see here now I can change the tempo by clicking and dragging and so and as you see that you see how it's shifting all the notes around so if I select this area and I hit delete and delete these tempo changes you can see now it's shifted this audio file so that now it is played right in time with whatever metronome I choose so right now it looks like we're at 143 so and I can of course slow it down or speed it up really fast and it sticks right with the metronome so anyway I hope you find that helpful and Good luck with your project.